Hello everyone. This video is going to be about S3 lifecycle policies. And I promise you by the end of the video, you're gonna know all about lifecycle policies, all about S3 tiers, and know how to use these two things to greatly reduce your costs if you're regularly working with S3. Uh, so before we get into lifecycle policies, we need to talk about S3 tiers first because that's the kind of foundation of lifecycle policies. Uh, so S3 tiers, it's probably a setting that you've never really paid attention to, but when you were creating your bucket, you had to select the tier of the bucket, well, the tier of the data within that bucket that you want um, it to be classified as. And what these tiers essentially mean is that uh, depending on the one that you pick, the operations that you place on that bucket, so the, the latency of your query operations may be different. The redundancy level that S3 guarantees may be different, so it may be possible to lose some of your data if you're using some of these classifications. Uh, and the cost is different for all of these different classifications. So that's kind of what I've laid out here uh, for you now is, um, these are the four general categories. Within these are the actual classifications of tiers, uh, but these are the kind of broad, broad strokes or the broad themes. Uh, so first we have general, which is if you're using AWS S3 for the first time, and if you just click next, 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 when you're creating your bucket, you're gonna get general and standard is the, the default one within the general. So that's typically what most people use, but it's actually one of the more expensive ones, if not the most expensive ones. Uh, so if you use general, or if you use default, then pay attention because you're definitely gonna be able to make some savings. And the second one is infrequent. Now infrequent does, as you would imagine, it's meant more for data that you access not very often. Uh, so you don't really wanna pay the premium of all this multi-availability zone um, infrastructure if you're not gonna be accessing this data very often. That being said, you don't wanna lose any of the speed advantages of using uh, just your general. Um, so that's what that's designed for. And unknown is kind of uh, when you don't really know what you're doing and you don't really know what your access pattern is gonna be for these files. And finally, archive is for more long-term storage. Uh, so let's go through these one by one and talk about the actual tiers that are associated with these broad categories. Uh, so the first one as part of general is what's called standard, standard. And like I said, this is the default that you, you get if you're using S3 for the first time, if you're just clicking through the console. Um, so what you get with standard is you get multi-AZ, which actually applies to, to most of these. And if you don't know what AZs are, AZ stand for avail availability zones. So assume for a second we have like a region here, maybe this is some kind of continent or something like that. Uh, within this region, AWS will set up different availability zones. And these are like data centers that can be distributed throughout uh, the region. And then it'll synchronize data across these. So these are constantly talking to each other. Uh, so if you're using standard, then you get multi-AZ for free. So your data is gonna be replicated across these zones just as part of using standard. Uh, so that's one of the benefits. You also get their classic um, high availability as a result of multi-AZ, high availability. And you also get um, high performance, high performance. And this is for both queries and for put operations, everything that kind of goes along with that. Uh, and so the cost structure of this, let me just change color, is uh, 22 cents, 0.22 per GB. Right? If you do some easy math, that's $2.20 for 100 gigabytes. So not, not bad of a cost, but it is pretty high if you're going to have like hundreds of GBs or terabytes or petabytes or whatever your, your kind of uh, domain kind of requires. Uh, so the second one is called infrequent. And infrequent does kind of like what I described before. It's more for, for when you want to access infrequently, but you also want to get high performance when you do access it. So there are two um, tiers within infrequent, but before I get into each of them, um, you should know that if you're using infrequent, regardless of tier, you're gonna have a 10 cents per GB access cost, right? And this is a data transfer cost to move it from the infrequent section of S3 to the more standard uh, section. And this is an overhead that you have to pay just to retrieve your data. So, so keep that in mind. So within infrequent, there are two different tiers. The first one is called standard, standard, right? And standard has lower availability than general. So I, I believe the, the availability on general is 99.99%. Uh, and for standard, it's 99, 0.9%, huge difference, right? Uh, availability, so lower availability. So the standard version isn't very different than the general version, it's just got like slightly lower availability, right? Uh, so the cost for standard, let me get my green here, is 
0.125 per GB, right? I actually put, should, probably should have put this in green, so 10, 10 GB. Uh, so if you're using standard with infrequent access, your storage cost is, you know, 13 cents or whatever for per gigabyte, but your access patterns are much different. Whereas over here, you're paying 22 GB for, for everything. So this is great for if you have data that you know you don't want to access very often, but when you do, you want great performance, you can save a lot of money by using standard infrequent. And the second bucket of uh, infrequent is another one called uh, single AZ. Single AZ. Uh, and so this one has slightly lower costs, lower cost, and it is uh, 10.10 per GB, right? Um, so that's for, for single. And what single kind of corresponds to is when, um, you know, you don't have this multi-AZ setup. You only have one of these guys. Uh, so the problem with, with single AZ is if since your data is stored just in one of these individual data centers, if this thing goes down, then it's good night for you. You can lose all of your data and um, you're going to be pretty much out of luck. Uh, so that's one of the kind of concerns to, uh, that I have when I'm talking about or using single AZ is that if this thing goes down, then your data is gone. That's not that's not a risk I'm willing to take if I'm building an application. Um, so that's it for general and infrequent. Uh, so just to recap those two, we have a standard variant, which is multi-AZ, uh, high availability, high performance. Infrequent has two kind of sub-tiers. Uh, there's the standard, which has high availability, and then the single AZ, which is lower cost, but... Um, more risk, essentially. Uh, so that's it for those two. So moving down to unknown now. Uh, so the primary tier within the unknown category is intelligent. Um, and just to recap on unknown, it's basically if you're if you're not really sure what your access pattern is going to be yet. Uh, so you you don't know whether to pick standard or infrequent or single AZ or whatever. Uh, so this is kind of a good place to start if you're not really sure what your access is going to look like. Now for intelligent. Um, it's a combination of general and infrequent. So it uses the properties of both of these. Now it'll basically partition your data. So it'll say, uh, if you're making a lot of queries on your S3 bucket, it'll say, oh, look, you're making a lot of queries on this particular bucket. I'm gonna move all the data within that over to general because that's got standard high multi-AZ, high availability and high performance. And then when the traffic dies down, it'll move that data over to infrequent. Uh, so that's kind of how it works. It's a nice balance of both worlds. It'll move you between the general and infrequent depending on your access pattern. Now with intelligent, your cost is just, it's the same cost for general. So the time that your data spends in general form or in the general partition, you pay 22 cents per GB. And then the time where it's partitioned to infrequent, you pay you know the 10 GB for access and then this for whatever um, whatever it's using here, standard or single AZ. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Also to keep in mind, there's a minor um, monitoring cost, monitoring. Uh, and so this is so S3 can figure out whether to put your data in the general category or put it in the infrequent category, okay? Um, so that's it for the unknown. Now moving down to archive. So archive has two different variants or two different flavors. Uh, the first one is called Glacier, Glacier. I'll draw a box around that. So the thing with Glacier, this is more for archiving long live logs or something that you don't really want to retrieve very low millisecond response times. Uh, so the thing with Glacier is that the response times vary from uh, one minute to 12 hours. And what the access latency on your bucket is, is depending on what you pick. So you can actually pick a bunch of intervals in between here, uh, but this is the min and this is the max. Okay, for, for Glacier. And the cost is, as you'd imagine, it's lower. Um, it is 0 0.004 cents per GB. Uh, and if you do the math, that's 40 cents for 100 GB. So a really reasonable cost. Uh, so let's move down a little bit here so I don't cut anything off. So the second tier within the archive category is Deep Glacier. Um, now this as you can imagine, is not much different than Glacier. It's just for even more long-term storage. So the guidance from AWS is like if, you know, 10 years worth of data. So maybe if you're like a credit card company, you have to store all transactions uh, for a period of time. Maybe you wanna use Deep Glacier for that to store that. And if you, know, if you need to pull it out, you can pull it out. But the thing is, it's gonna take 12 hours 
uh, to access your data. Uh, so this is more for something where it's not a big deal if you need to make a request and come and, and look at the data that you get back the day later or a couple of days later. Uh, so that's the kind of appeal of this category. So that's kind of it for the tiers. Now let's circle back now to lifecycle rules. The whole point of this video was to show you how you can save money and you do that by using lifecycle tiers. Lifecycle tiers. And what lifecycle tiers allow you to do is basically set rules on your S3 bucket. So for instance, for the first 30 days of data that's inserted into my S3 bucket, I want it to be general standard, right? Because in all likelihood, if you're just inserting data into your bucket, it's very likely that you're gonna be retrieving that data more often than something that's been in a bucket for a very long time. Uh, so you can set up rules to say for the first 30 days, I want it in standard. And after that, I want to apply a different rule. I want to move this to the infrequent category. So for instance, after 60 days, I want to move it to infrequent. And so that's how you can save here. So um, the time after 60 days, you'd be saving a lot of money because you're not gonna be accessing this data very often. And as we saw, using infrequent is quite a bit cheaper um, if you're not accessing it very often, as the name would imply. And then after that, maybe you wanna move it to more longer term storage. Maybe because you know your your application maybe only work on months uh, or monthly level data, and now it's time to move this into a much cheaper long term storage option like Glacier or Deep Glacier. Uh, so you can maybe say after 90 days, then you want to move it to Glacier. Uh, so that's what lifecycle tiers, lifecycle policies essentially allow you to do. It basically allows you to move your data within these different tiers completely automatically. So I'm gonna be making a second video to show you in the console and walk you through exactly how to do this so you can set up the rules on your bucket. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much folks, and I'll see you next time.